Who had that? My fellow leaders, this is the fourth time I've had the great honor of speaking to this assembly as President of the United States. It'll be my last. I've seen a remarkable sweep of history. I know, I know many look at the world today and see difficulties and react with despair, but I do not. I won't. As leaders, we don't have the luxury. I recognize the challenges from Ukraine to Gaza to Sudan and beyond. War, hunger, terrorism, brutality, record displacement of people, a climate crisis, democracy at risk, stranger than our societies, the promise of artificial intelligence and its significant risk. The list goes on. But maybe because all I've seen and all we have done together over the decades, I have hope. I know there is a, a way forward. There will always be forces that pull our countries apart and the world apart. Aggression, extremism, chaos, and cynicism. A desire to retreat from the world and go it alone. Our task, our test, is to make sure that the forces holding us together are stronger than those who are pulling us apart. That the principles of partnership that we came here each year to uphold can withstand the challenges. That the center holds once again. Each of us in this body has made a commitment to the principles of the UN Charter to stand up against aggression. When Russia invaded Ukraine, we could have stood by and merely protested. But Vice President Harris and I understood that that was an assault on everything this institution was supposed to stand for. And so, in my direction, America stepped into the breach, providing massive security and economic and humanitarian assistance. Our NATO allies and partners in 50-plus nations stood up as well. But most importantly, the Ukrainian people stood up. I asked the people of this chamber to stand up for them. The good news is Putin's war has failed and his, at his core aim. He set out to destroy Ukraine, but Ukraine is still free. He set out to weaken NATO, but NATO is bigger, stronger, more united than ever before with two new members, Finland and Sweden. But we cannot let up. The world now has another choice to make. Will we sustain our support to help Ukraine win this war and preserve its freedom, or walk away and let aggression be renewed and a nation be destroyed? I know my answer. We cannot grow weary. We cannot look away. And we will not let up on our support for Ukraine. Not until Ukraine wins a just and durable peace in the UN Charter. Let me close with this. Even as we navigate so much change, one thing must not change. We must never forget who we're here to represent. We, the people. These are the first words of our Constitution, the very idea of America. They inspired the opening words of the UN Charter. I made the preservation of democracy the central cause of my presidency. This summer, I faced a decision whether to seek a second term as president. It was a difficult decision. Being president has been the honor of my life. There's so much more I want to get done. As much as I love the job, I love my country more. I decided after 50 years of public service, it's time for a new generation of leadership to take my nation forward. My fellow leaders, let us never forget some things are more important than staying in power. It's your people. It's your people that matter the most. Never forget, we are here to serve the people, not the other way around, because the future will be, the future will be won by those who unleash the full potential of their people to breathe free, to think freely, to innovate, to educate, to live and love openly without fear, 
That's the soul of democracy. It does not belong to any one country. I've seen it all around the world, and the brave men and women who ended apartheid, brought down the Berlin Wall, fight today for freedom and justice and dignity. It's remarkable the power of we the people that makes me more optimistic about the future than I've ever been. Since I was first elected to the United States Senate in 1972, every age faces its challenges. I saw it as a young man. I see it today. But we are stronger than we think. We're stronger together than alone. And what the people call impossible is just an illusion. Nelson Mandela taught us, and I quote, it always seems impossible until it's done. It always seems impossible until it's done. My fellow leaders, there is nothing that's beyond our capacity if we work together. Let's work together. God bless you all, and may God protect all those who seek peace. Thank you.